this is my year, I promise. I promise you this is your year if you choose. And some of you may be thinking, I can't believe I allowed an entire year to go by. It's been a year since I didn't become a better person. You may be thinking, you know, one of my goals was to stop fabricating the truth. Let me go ahead and say this. One of my <laughs> goals was to stop lying to myself about making lifestyle changes. Have you ever done that at the beginning of the year? You begin to start saying, I'm going to make these type of lifestyle changes. And you may have some resolutions or some to-do lists, but uh, you know that we have, instead of to-do lists, we have a to-be list, who we want to become for the next year. And so uh, you may be saying, I'm going to go work out every day. That may be something that you want to do or, or at least consider working out, right? Or you may have resolutions for 2020, and it may be to accomplish the goals of 2019, which should have been done in 2018, because I promised them in 2017. <laughs> that may be your situation. But I want to make sure you know that many of us fear making systems or who goals because we fear we may fail and not finish because God has someone he wants us to become. And we may believe that we may fail becoming the person that God created us to be. That, that may be something you are challenged with. With that dreadful thought that you may never become the person God created you to be. Well, I want to give you a spiritual truth. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 4, it says, I am certain. Somebody say, I am certain, I am certain. that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. That's the truth that we need to grab so God isn't finished with you yet. You're in the construction. We're all in the construction. God isn't finished with you and I yet. That's why we can say, this is my year. I promise you, this is my year. But I'm going to tell you another truth. You'll never finish something you don't start. If you don't start it's impossible to finish. And, and I want you to think about this. What do you need to start? What have you been putting off? What's left undone? Is it fit in your health? We'll go get a gym membership. Is it getting into a relationship? We'll go to eHarmony or Christian Mingle. Or simply go take a shower, right? <laughs> is it strong fellowship and friendship? Is that one of the things that you are leaving undone? You push everyone away? Well, won't you go start a tribe or go get involved in a tribe? Get plugged in with, you know, our, our tribes, meaning our, our Bible studies that take place throughout the city at, at Starbucks, is at other people's houses or whatever location. Get involved with a tribe so someone can actually teach you the word of God, a small group some people call them. You may say, well, I, one of the things that I need to challenge myself to be is, is more generous. Well, no worries. We're going to have a great opportunity every month because we're going to have a campaign for our new location called A Heart for the House Ministry, where you have an opportunity to give towards, you know, the, neck, the building fund of, of us snatching some land out of Richardson and, and slapping a piece of property together and building so we can go worship and reach people in the Richardson area. Maybe you're challenged with your generosity. Or maybe you want to make a difference in other people's lives. Well, start serving in the department. Get, get involved with the welcome team. Get involved with the media team. Get involved with, you know, our, our worship team. You may have a gift to be able to play an instrument. Get involved. Get plugged in. Go, go get plugged in with Pastor Tim with the, with the youth ministry, the student ministry. Or, or get, get plugged in with Pastor Ramon and start helping out with the Spanish services. Get plugged in if you want to 
make a difference in someone's life. But more importantly, what is it that you are putting off? What is it? I'll give you a moment to think about it. What is it that you're putting off? If you begin to fast forward all the way to the end, I think it's very helpful to know where you need to start before you begin to start talking about where you want to end. Sometimes we're thinking about the end result, what we want to become futuristically, but we forget about the steps that we need to take. What would you want people to say about you when you're gone? Or let me put it in another way. Let me use another phrase. What type of legacy do you want to leave behind you when you die? When you go? What do you want people to remember you for? What is your life supposed to represent once you're gone? This reminds me of an iconic figure in the Bible when we're talking about make, taking steps. And I'm going to give you three things to do or th- three things to consider or three things to process when talking about making this year yours in order for you to say, this is my year. I promise you. But there's an iconic figure in the Bible. His name is Moses. Now, ultimately, we can all remember about him splitting the Red Sea. We can remember him coming to Pharaoh with a one-line sermon, let my people go, and remember him journeying, journeying through the wilderness with two million people plus, and we can think of this great leader, this massive figure. He's an iconic person. You can remember him all throughout the Bible. People will talk about him. And and I want to look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 through 26, and look what it says. It says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known As the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, meaning he felt like being associated with Christ and connecting with Christ was greater than the treasures that he could see right now. Because it says, because he was looking ahead to his reward. This is where Moses ended. He ended people writing manuscripts, people writing, the, the writer of Hebrew discussing him in this way. This is what he was remembered for. This is his legacy. This is what people thought of him after he was gone. After he died, people remembered him as being this great faith man, this man that split the Red Sea, this man that disassociated himself with riches and the glory of Pharaoh's kingdom, Egypt. He disassociated himself with this great massive movement of a people called the Egyptians, and Pharaoh was someone that was like some type of God at that time, and he disassociated himself with all those pleasures he would have, all the money he would have, all the privileges he would have, all the property he would have, and all the prestige he would have. He disassociated himself with Pharaoh and said, I would rather do what God called me to do. And I know that's a lot of pleasure, and and that's a lot of of fun, but I'm going to just have to disassociate myself with that, because God has something more. And this is what he's known for. He's known for, for pushing that off and embracing God's will. But this is not where he started. If we want to take a backtrack in in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, it says this, it it says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He says, who am I? This is where he started. 
And you know what was beautiful about that? God heard the problem, kind of like shoot it off and didn't even discuss it. And this is his answer, he says. And God said, I'll be with you. See, if we're talking about leaving a legacy, if we're talking about making sure that 2020 is a year that we can say I accomplished, you know, becoming the person that God created us to be, you and I have to start where we are. See, Moses started where he was at. He didn't, he had to start right there. He had disbelief. He had a little doubt there. He had to, I'm here to tell you to start where you are. Start where you are. Start exactly where you are. Don't begin to start trying to make up another location for yourself or in existence. Don't, don't begin to start thinking that I need to be somewhere else in order for me to become the person I need to be. You start exactly where you're at. If you're in a place where, where you're financially busted, if, if you're in a place where you're disgusted and your condition may not be where you want it to be, start exactly where you're at. Don't begin to start creating this, uh, this fabric, you know, uh, this, this, this material in your mind or this thought in your mind or this existence in your mind of yourself that do not, you know, hold any weight in reality, <laughs> meaning it's not real, it's not true of yourself. Start exactly where you're at. Moses had to start where he was at. He, he didn't act like he was some. You know why it's important to start where you're at? Let me give you this. It doesn't matter where you are. When you know who you're with, it doesn't matter what condition you're in. My financially, my financial finances aren't all that good, but God is with me. Now you know you got the ability to get your finances right because guess who's with you? God told him, he says, yeah, you can't talk. Yeah, you don't have the ability to do nothing, but guess what? I'm with you. Yes, you're not all that powerful. Yes, you don't have eloquent speech. No, you are not this mighty person. But guess what? I'm with you. You may be in a place right now where you feel unworthy because of your past mistakes. But here you, here you got to come to the conclusion that God is with me. You may be so far behind in your finances that you don't see a way out. But you got to conclude that God is with me. You may be facing some big decisions and you're confused as to which way to go, but you got to conclude that God is with me. You may experience loss and death and divorce or even a loss of job in 2019, and you're not sure how you're going to make it in through 2020, but you got to conclude that God is with me. It doesn't matter where you are when you know who you're with. It doesn't matter where you are. Don't, don't get discouraged about the place you're at right now because if God is with you, who can be against you? If God is with you, you have the majority. And so Moses says, I'm not all that eloquent of speech. I can't speak that well. And God says, no worries. I'm with you. In chapter 4, Verses 1 and 2 in Exodus, Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? He said, a staff, he replied. And let me tell you, when it means a staff, let me, let me just go ahead and bring it home. It was a big old stick, okay? <laughs> no, we need to know what he's talking A stick, a piece of wood. You know what? Don't worry about where you're at. Start where you're at, but also you got to use what you have. Stop trying to get this surplus and trying to figure. Right now, you got to use exactly what you have. You don't have to get these major resources to be able to become the person you need to be. Use what you have. You know, some people are trying to extend themselves to, to get more so they can become who they need to become, but actually, got to use exactly what you have. Moses had a staff. Because he was simply doing his daily work as a shepherd. If God, God was honoring his consistency of being just a shepherd, maybe you feel that way. You, well, I'm just raising my kids. You know, I'm just going to work. I'm just changing old. I'm just a construction worker. You know, I'm just a banker. I'm just, I'm just a student at school. But let me tell you, what you have is exactly what God uses. God know what you have. 
It's not like God's deceived in thinking that you have more than what you have. He knows exactly what you have. He's not deceived. He knows everything. Use what you have. Somebody say, I got to use it. Whatever it is, he had a staff or a big old stick. And God said, what do you have in your hand? He says, a staff, meaning I have this stick. And God's like, I'll use that. I'll use that. I just want to show you that what you have is more than what you think you need. A lot of us think we need more. You know, some of us, we think we need more. No matter how slow you are going or how slow you think it's taking you to accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish in life, I'm going to tell you right now, you're lapping everybody that's on the couch. Everybody's on the bench, you lapping them. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you flying past them because if everybody's not in the game. You know, they can't score. It's impossible to score if you're on the bench. No matter how slow you go, you're still lapping everybody that's on the couch. So one of the things you got to do is you got to start where you are. Also, you got to use what you have because guess what? Think about it. Remember, what you have is exactly what God uses. And he continues in Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave humans their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. I'm, gonna hear, I'm here to tell you this. You got to start where you are. You got to use what you have, but you got to be able to just do what you can as well. See, a lot of us are trying to do something that we have no business doing. Let, let me tell you what you got to do. You got to be you and let God be God. So you, you, gotta, you, can't put, you can't do the God thing. God can only do that. You got to be you and let God be God. If, you know, this is what happened. He began to start talking, and, and, and he began to start making all these excuses. God said, go do this. He says, well, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, can, can I tell you really what's going on? It's like when you try to tell a kid it's time to go to bed, right? They begin to start, can I go get a drink? I got to go use the bathroom. I'm not tired. I'm hungry. I'm scared of the dark. I need a blanket. My pajamas are itchy. I need a new Band-Aid. Can you read me another book? Will you tell me a story? Can I sleep with my fire truck? Will you sing me a song? How come you get to stay up? Right? It, 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 it seemed like, you know, he started coming up with all these excuses. This is what Moses is doing. Moses is coming up with excuses. He said, I, I can't talk. I can't, I can't speak. Hold, hold on. I mean, I, I don't know. And that's usually a lot of time what we do is we forget that God can be God and we got to be who we are. You got to be you and let God be God. You can't do what God do. And God actually, to be honest, he can't do what you do. He can't, he can't surrender your will for you. You have to surrender your will yourself. That's your abilities. That's human abilities. He can't make you surrender your will because volition, free will, will not be violated by God's sovereignty. So God will, you know, do what he do, but he's asking you to do what you need to do. You be you and let God be God. You got to take the next step. Step one. A lot of us are thinking about step 28. And that's the problem, is sometimes we're, going, we're getting ahead of God. I remember I was getting discouraged one time when me and Elena was living in the home. Um, I think this is probably like 2012 or 2013. Me and Elena was living in Outcry in the Barrio, and uh, we had been doing a lot of evangelism, like we did the other day. Well, I think we passed about, what, 10, 12,000 flyers all over the city of Dallas just to close out 2019 very strong to make sure everybody knows there's hope through the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's, there's hope. Well, well, when you're doing that constantly, day in and day out, and it wasn't as much help as it is now, for sure. And you're going out, you're going out, you're going out, and then you drive from the store, and you see people hanging out on the corner. 
You see prostitution going on, people shooting dice, people with guns. You see all this stuff. And, and I kind of got discouraged. I'm like, man, God, I mean, how are we going to be able to change this? I mean, how are we going to be able to change this neighborhood? How are we going to be able to help these people? It don't seem like they want no help. And I began to start getting discouraged about the production of our ministry. Man, we can't save them all. We can't reach everyone. I was reminded of a statement Mother Teresa made. She said, if you can't feed 100 people, then just feed one. And I was re- reminded that you got to start one heart at a time. Don't do God's job. You do what you do. You do, you be you, and let God be God. Let's look at this text before we close out. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 through 26 says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose. That was his. He was being who he needed to be. He chose. There's some decisions you and I can make. We can start where we are. We can use what we have. We choose those things. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God. Could, can we say this? By faith, when you had grown up, you refused to be known as simply a product of your past? Can we say, by faith, when you grow grown up, you refused to be known as the person that made all the mistakes? Could we say, by faith, when you had grown up, you refused to be known as your old identity, that old person? Could we say, by faith, when you had grown up, you refused to be known by that false identity the devil gave you, by saying you was a loser, you was an addict, you was a liar, a manipulator, you would never make it. Could it say, when you grow up, you will refuse, you will refuse to be simply a product of your past, and you can choose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. There, there's a teaching in that. I don't want to take too long on that, but if you really think about it, many times we entertain what we shouldn't entertain instead of living the way we should live. You know, and, and I want to tell you this, many times we forget what we should remember, and we remember what we, shouldn't for, what we should forget. We should forget those sins that Jesus washed away under his blood, but it seemed like we hold on to them. And it seemed like we should remember the word of God that he gave and administered to our hearts, but it seemed like we forget it. So sometimes we forget what we should remember, and we remember what we should forget. And sometimes we entertain what we shouldn't entertain, and we don't live the way we should live. Because right here he's saying, hey, it's, it's challenging because he said he chose to be mistreated with the people of God. And I'm here to tell you that when you make a stand and you grow up sometimes, you feel like you are being mistreated as a Christian. Sometimes you don't even understand why these things are happening to you. Sometimes you can even allow that to put you in a woe is me mentality. Like, why am I always going through this mess? Maybe God's allowing it so you can see how great he is. See, because you will never see how good God is until you realize how weak you are. You won't know how strong he is until you know how weak you are. You won't know how, you know, because you got to be you and let God be God. Meaning the the stuff that's impossible, that's God's job. And we're going to have to learn how to depend and trust him in 2020 in order for us to say, this is my year. I promise you. I promise you, because I'm going to let God be God, and I'm going to be me. You got one shot at 2020. One shot. There will never be a 2020 again. You got one shot at life. One. You'll never have another one again. You'll never finish something you don't start. Today is a day that we need to start challenging ourselves to start where we are to start this Christian life. That may be the challenge today is you need to just start living the Christian life. I didn't say start going to church. I said start living the Christian life. And start applying the biblical truths that we know that's applicable. The word that we know that we have. 
I was listening to a podcast, and he said something so powerful on the way to the drive over. He said, the only truth that you know is the truth that you do. And so it's not the scripture that you memorize, it's the scripture that you apply. And so God is wanting us to actually apply this year so we can become the greatest people that he intended for us to be. He, did you know that God has a, an entire plan for your life, a blueprint? He knows exactly what he desired for you to be. And so this year is the question of the hour. This year, we can put it before us, a question that will really stir us. Who do I want to become this year? Not what do I want to do. Many of us, we set goals to do goals instead of become goals. And that's one of the worst things because it's reversed. Because you can, you, we had never accomplished these to-do lists if we don't become a particular person. We'll have all these to-do lists and we wonder why we fail. See, if we become a particular person, if we change that thought and we say, you know what? I'm not putting a whole lot of goals together this year about who, what I want to do. I'm going to challenge myself to become somebody. And when I become somebody, automatically I'll do. Remember, identity shapes actions. And out of, out of identity, you know, great habits will take place. And so I'm challenging you today to think about who you want to become. When you do this, start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can. We don't have a 2020 to remember. We have a 2020 that's before us. We have a 2019 to remember. So now we can start where we are exactly what we are, we can use what we have, whatever you have, and, you, and do what you can. We won't only have a 2020 to remember, but we'll have a life to leave, a legacy that we'll leave our kids, our children to live in such a way because you lived in such a way. The exampleship of you being a great parent, a great father, a great mom, that's amazing. And so God is here to challenge us all today. And here it is. This is my year. I promise you. 